Great to be with you on this Tuesday morning. I trust your week has gotten started properly. I know if you're like me, it's in some ways you wonder what day it is. My wife especially, who's been more isolated than I've been. I've been in the swing of regular ministry here at the church, but it's just so odd. And it is surreal, really. And the more we go, in some ways, the harder it's getting. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, and that is this matter of allowing ourselves to let our emotions become magnified. Uh, now, we as believers know we shouldn't be fearful, we shouldn't be anxious, but as we hear reports and as things right now this week are ramping up and will ramp up even more probably next week, uh, it's easy for us to begin to be fearful when we wouldn't normally be for fearful. Now, let me just give you this little piece of advice first. Remember, most fear comes because of anxiety not being handled properly. When there are lots of things we feel like we're not accomplishing, things we wish we could do, things that, that we are sensing failure on our part, if there's too many of those, then fear is one of the outlets, depression or fear, uh, the outlets that we just naturally go to, humanly speaking, and Satan loves to play on that. And we have a lot of things that are building up, a lot of things we can't even accomplish, and we're probably concerned and worried about those things. But fear is something that can grip us, and the more we hear about all that's going on and how people are suffering with the COVID-19 uh, experience, uh, fear could begin to come into our heart. And I was stirred the other day, I've alluded to it a couple in a couple of our messages here on live stream, but the tremendous miracle of Jesus on the Sea of Galilee. He uh, was uh, going from one side of the sea to another, and he was with his disciples, and we read in Mark 4, 37, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And uh, he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? These men were, men were just gripped with fear. That's pretty understandable, isn't it? Uh, we know from the storms that can come on the Sea of Galilee, I was in one on a boat, you can have waves that go 10, 15, even 20 feet high with hurricane force winds because of the heat coming from the desert up in this well below sea level lake, and then the cold air coming off of the Mediterranean over the Galilean hills. It can be amazing, and it can come up out of nowhere. I mean, they really were going to perish, and yet the Lord rebukes them. First of all, he says, peace be still, and the storm stopped. And then he says to them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Now, it was completely understandable that they had fear. And yet, because Jesus was with them, they should have had confidence in him and should have known that the circumstances were not too great for him to handle. He's the creator God. They knew he was the son of God. And so he rebukes them for their fear. And I want to encourage us to realize this fear comes up and it's probably because of anxiety. We need to deal with those things. But we can stop and say, no, wait a second. Jesus is with me. He is in the boat of my life. Why am I fearful? Where is my faith? I can trust God to use this for good. God's plan is always uh, the best, and he's going to use this in my life, my family, my church, my nation, all the other circumstances that, that I'm in. Maybe economics are causing fear. Whatever it is, you need to say, I can trust my God. You know, it's very interesting. It was mentioned to me at the Revival prayer meeting the other night when I was talking about Mark chapter 4. One of the men said he had heard someone else say that, well, the Lord had told them, let's pass over to the other side there in verse 35. Well, if Jesus had said we're going to the other side, then they were going to go to the other side. 
And Jesus has promised to be with us until the end of the age. He has promised to take care of us and be our God guide protector for our life. He will get us to the other side. So I want to encourage you, if any fear grips you today, uh, you begin to get a little uncertain, just stop and say, no, Jesus is in my boat. I've got him here. He's the one that can say, peace be still. And the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May God give us a real victory in our spirits today as we trust him.